Good morning. It's a Saturday morning, and how good is it that we can begin the weekend by reading the book of Jeremiah? We're going to read from chapters 26 to 30 today. While God's judgment upon Judah is continuously proclaimed, Judah shows no signs of repentance, and instead shows complete depravity of spiritual discernment. As Jeremiah preaches in the temple court, the officials of Judah gather and plot to kill him, just as they did with another prophet, Uriah, who warned them prior to Jeremiah. Furthermore, the false prophet Hananiah publicly professes that God will break the yoke of the Babylonian king, directly opposing the words that were spoken by Jeremiah. However, Hananiah's prophecy is soon revealed to be false. Ultimately, Hananiah dies in the seventh month of that very year, and just as God's word foretold. Meanwhile, Jeremiah sends a letter to the exiled people of Judah, urging them to repent. And conveys and reminds the people of God's promise that they will indeed return one day. So, building the context, let's begin the weekend by reading the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter twenty-six. Jeremiah threatened with death. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house. Speak to all the cities of Judah. They come to worship in the house of the Lord. All the words that I command you to speak to them, do not hold back a word. It may be they will listen, and every one turn from his evil way, that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, "Thus says the Lord: If you will not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Siloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth." The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, "You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, 'This house shall be like Siloh'?" And this city shall be desolate, without inhabitant. And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the official and to all the people, "This man deserves the sentence of death." Because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, "The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, mend your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God." And the Lord will relent of the disaster that He has pronounced against you. But as far from me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and up upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Jeremiah spared from death. Then the officials and all the people say to the priests and the prophets, "This man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God." And certain of the elders of the land arose and spoke to all the assembled people, saying, "Micah of Moresheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah." And say to all the people of Judah, Thus says the Lord of hosts: Zion shall be ploughed as a field, Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountains of the house a wooded height. 
Did Hezekiah king of Judah and all Judah put him to death? Did he not fear the Lord and entreat the favor of the Lord? And did not the Lord relent of the disaster that he had pronounced against them? But we are about to bring great disaster upon ourselves. There was another man who prophesied in the name of the Lord, Uriah, the son of Shemaiah, from Kiriath Jerarim. He prophesied against this city, again against this land in words like those of Jeremiah. And when King Jehoiakim, with all his warriors and all the officials, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard of it, he was afraid and fled and escaped to Egypt. Then King Jehoiakim sent to Egypt certain men, Anathan, the son of Akbar, and others with him. And they took Uriah from Egypt and brought him to King Jehoiakim, who struck him down with the sword and dumped his dead body into the burial place of the common people. But the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shephan, was with Jeremiah so that he was not given over to the people to be put to death. Chapter 27 The Yoke of Nebuchadnezzar In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Thus says the Lord to me, Make yourself straps and yoke bars, and put them on your neck. Send word to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the sons of Ammon, the king of Tyre, and the king of Sidon by the hand of the envoys, who have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah king of Judah. Give them his charge for their masters. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, this is what you shall say to your masters. It is I who by my great power and my outstretched arm have made the earth with the men and animals that are on the earth, and I give it to whomever it seems right to me. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I have given him also the beasts of the field to serve him. All the nations shall serve him and his son and his grandson until the time of his own land comes. Then many nations and great kings shall make him their slave. But if any nation or kingdom will not serve this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, I will punish that nation with the sword, with famine and with pestilence, declares the Lord, until I have consumed it by his hand. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your fortune tellers, or your sorcerers, who are saying to you, you shall not serve the king of Babylon. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you, with the results that you will be removed far from your land, and I will drive you out, and you will perish. But any nation that will bring its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will live on its own land to work it and dwell there, declares the Lord. To Zedekiah, the king of Judah, I spoke in like manner. Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. Why will you and your people die by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence, as the Lord has spoken concerning any nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Do not listen to the words of the prophets who are saying to you, you shall not serve the king of Babylon. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you. I have not sent them, declares the Lord, but they are prophesying falsely in my name, with the results that I will drive you out and you will perish, you and the prophet who are prophesying to you. Then I spoke to the priests and to all these people, saying, 
Thus says the Lord, Do not listen to the words of your prophets who are prophesying to you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house will now shortly be brought back from Babylon. For it is I a lie that they are prophesying to you. Do not listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Why should this city become a desolation? If they are prophets, and if the word of the Lord is with them, then let them intercede with the Lord of hosts, that the vessels that are left in the house of the Lord, in the house of the king of Judah, and in Jerusalem may not go to Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars, the sea, the stands, and the rest of the vessels that are left in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take away when he took into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that are left in the house of the Lord, in the house of the king of Judah, and in Jerusalem. They shall be carried to Babylon and remain there until the day when I visit them, declares the Lord. Then I will bring them back and restore them to this place. Chapter 28 Hananiah the False Prophet In that same year, at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah the king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, Hananiah the son of Azur, the prophet from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, which Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may the Lord do so, may the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true, and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people, the priests who preceded you and me from ancient times, prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke bars from the neck of Jeremiah the prophet and broke them. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of the old people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within two years. But Jeremiah the prophet went his way. Some time after prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke bars from off the neck of Jeremiah the prophet, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Go tell Hananiah. Thus says the Lord, you have broken wooden bars, but you have made in their place bars of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put upon the neck of all these nations an iron yoke to serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, for I have given to him even the beasts of the field. And Jeremiah the prophet said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah. The Lord has not sent you, and you have made these people trust in a lie. Therefore thou says the Lord, Behold, I will remove you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die, 
because you have uttered rebellion against the Lord. In that same year, in the seventh month, the prophet Hananiah died. Chapter 29, Jeremiah's Letter to the Exiles These are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah and the Queen Mother, the Enoch's, the officials of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the metal workers had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Jemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent to exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there and do not decrease but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, when seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise, and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me, when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Because you have said, The Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon, that says the Lord concerning the king who sits on the throne of David, and concerning all the people who dwell in this city, your kinsmen who did not go out with you into exile. That says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am sending on them sword, famine and pestilence, and I will make them like vile figs that are so rotten they cannot be eaten. I will pursue them with the sword, famine and pestilence, and I will make them a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse, a terror, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. Because they did not pay attention to my words, declares the Lord, that I persistently sent to you by my servants the prophets, but you would not listen, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, all you exiles whom I sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon, that says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning Ahab, the son of Goliath, and Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, who are prophesying a lie to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall strike them down before your eyes. Because of them, this curse shall be used by all the exiles from Judah in Babylon. The Lord make you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. Because they have done an outrageous thing in Israel, they have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives, and they have spoken in my name lying words that I did not command them. 
I am the one who knows, and I am witness, declares the Lord. Shemaiah's fourth prophecy. To Shemaiah of Nehalem, you shall say, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You have sent letters in your name to all the people who are in Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Maaseiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord has made you priest instead of Jehoiada, the priest, to have charge in the house of the Lord over every madman who prophesies, to put him in the stocks and neck irons. Now why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who is prophesying to you? For he has sent to us in Babylon, saying, Your exile will be long. Build houses and live in them, and plant gardens and eat their produce. Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, sent to all the exiles, saying, Thus says the Lord concerning Shemaiah of Nelhelam, Because Shemaiah had prophesied to you when I did not send him, and has made you trust in a lie. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah of Nehala and his descendants. He shall not have anyone living among these people, and he shall not see the good that I will do to my people, declares the Lord, for he has spoken rebellion against the Lord. Chapter 30 Restoration for Israel and Judah the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Write in a book all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will restore the fortune of my people, Israel and Judah, says the Lord. And I will bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall take possessions of it. These are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. Thus says the Lord, We have heard a cry of panic, of terror, and no peace. Ask now and see, can a man bear a child? Why then do I, every man with his hands on his stomach, like a woman in labor? Why has every face turned pale? Alas, that day is so great, there is none like it. It is a time of distress for Jacob, yet he shall be saved out of it. And it shall come to pass in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck, and I will burst your bones, and foreigners shall no more make a servant of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Then fear not, O Jacob, my servant, declares the Lord, nor be dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save you from far away, and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return and have quiet and ease, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with you to save you, declares the Lord. I will make a full end of all the nations, among whom I scattered you, but of you I will not make a full end. I will discipline you in just measure, and I will by no means leave you unpunished. For thus says the Lord, Your hurt is incurable, and your wound is grievous. There is none to uphold your cause, no medicine for your wound, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you, they care nothing for you, for I have dealt you the blow of an enemy, the punishment of merciless foe. Because your guilt is great, because your sins are flagrant, why do you cry out over your hurt? Your pain is incurable, because your guilt is great, because your sins are flagrant. I have done these things to you. Therefore, all who devour you shall be devoured, and all your foes, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Those who plunder you shall be plundered, 
and all who prey on you I will make a prey. For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. Because they have called you an outcast, it is Zion for whom no one cares. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob, and I have compassion on his dwellings. The city shall be rebuilt on its mound, and the palace shall stand where it used to be. Out of them shall come songs of thanksgiving, and the voices of those who celebrate. I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will make them honored, and they will not be small. Their children shall be as they were of old, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all who oppress them. Their prince shall be one of themselves, their ruler shall come out from their midst. I will make him draw near, and he shall approach me, for who would dare of himself to approach me, declares the Lord. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the storm of the Lord, wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest, it will burst upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intentions of his mind. In the latter days you will understand this. This is the word of God given to us today. Amen. Keeping what we've just read in mind, here are some application questions that will help you further meditate on what we've just read. Firstly, we are called to repent and listen to God's voice. Are you attentive in the Lord's words? Secondly, even in difficult circumstances, Jeremiah proclaims God's word. Are you proclaiming his word and the sharing of the gospel? And finally, the passage advises against listening to false prophets. From what lies do you need to shut your ears to and guard your hearts against today? Thinking about these questions, let's all end with a prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you and we praise you this morning that through the book of Jeremiah, you remind us that you are the only one that can proclaim truth. Though there are many lies in our lives, uh, many false prophets in our lives that try to teach otherwise and draw, uh, try to draw us away from you, we profess that Indeed, when we are uh, yoked by your love and your mercy, that your unwavering love clings onto us and leads us to salvation and your mercy. So Father, it is this hope that we cling onto today. Allow us to be able to be lifted up by the truths of the gospel. And furthermore, allow us to be able to take that truth to the ends of the world. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do hope and pray that today you're able to take the good news of Jesus Christ and proclaim it, proclaim that truth to all who need to hear it. Embrace Jesus, embrace people.